In this video, we're going to show you how to install the leveling kit on your Jeep Wrangler located at each corner of your suspension. Using a 19 millimeter socket, go ahead and loosen and remove your lug nuts. Once you remove the lug nuts, remove the wheel and set it aside. Use an 18 millimeter socket to loosen the nut here and a T55 Torx bit on the front to secure that bolt. Remove the nut, the washer, and the bolt. There's two bolts on the bottom here. They're 12 millimeter. And we're gonna use the wrench on the top side. And we're gonna use a 12 millimeter socket on the bottom here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that nut. Now we'll remove the bolt. I'm gonna do the same for the other one here. We have our ABS electronic wire right here. We're gonna pop this out of the metal retainer clips. So one in front of the shock, one behind the shock, and there's one right by the knuckle here on the top. I'm just gonna pop that out and slide that off. I'm gonna repeat this process for the other side. And on the back side here, we have a 13 millimeter bolt down here that's holding the shot, uh, the coil spring in place. And I had to tap the extent uh, socket on there due to the amount of rust that was on it. I'm going to remove this bolt with the clamp holding the spring. Once we do this, we're gonna do the same for the passenger side. Just wiggle that spring and that will loosen this clamp right here. You want to pay close attention to where the spring is positioned down here. The tail of the spring fits into a notch in the axle housing itself. So we reinstall our spring, make sure that the tail of the spring fits into the little notch right here. Very important. I'm going to use a pry bar and we're just going to flex the suspension here. What we want to do is flex this enough where the where this will come up and give us room to move that spring and then we're going to wiggle this out like so. Next step, we want to grab the bump stop, pop that out. Now that we have the spring removed from the driver's side, go ahead and repeat for the passenger side. And next, we want to go ahead and remove this cup from the tube here. On our particular vehicle, there's a 13 millimeter bolt up inside here. You want to go ahead and get your socket on there.
you want to go ahead and loosen this here. And once this bolt comes out, we'll go ahead and pop the cup off the tube. And go ahead and pull that bolt out and then you can go ahead and separate the cap. With that lower cup removed, you can use your pry bar or tool to pop down the spring insulator here. Slide that down and off the tube. Go ahead and take your new component here. I'm gonna slide this up and tap this up into place. Now, if the component feels a little tight, we did put some grease on the tube and we're just gonna tap this up. Now the flat portion of this here faces the back. Tap that all the way up till it's flush with the base there. Take our old spring insulator slide this up into place and it's gonna sit just like so. Next, we go ahead and take our cup and we're gonna line this up, and put that up in there and we're gonna install our bolt. We sourced a new bolt because our original one was a little junky. And we'll go ahead and thread that up. I like to thread it in as far as I can by hand first and then we'll come back and snug it down. All right, now we'll go ahead and get a ratchet on there. And let's go ahead and snug that down. Now I'm gonna make sure this is pretty snug. Once that's nice and tight, we can go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and install our bump stop next. Now we'll put some grease on the bump stop as well as up inside the cup here. That's gonna help you push it up in and just push it in. And you'll feel that kind of bottom out. Take your spring. I'm gonna feed that up. Well, at this point, we do have to compress our axle here. Now we're on the passenger side of the vehicle and we're gonna put a jack underneath this side of the axle, underneath the knuckle. And we're going to compress our suspension over here. That'll allow the driver's side to drop down a little bit further. Now, if you notice, I have the tail of the spring facing forward. It should be dropping down into the notch on the other side of the spring pad. Here we go. Now we can go ahead and rotate the spring. Make sure that it falls into the notch. And we're now going to lower the jack on the passenger side. Install your spring retainer. You move the shock out of the way, set that on top of the spring. Go ahead and get that bolt started. And tighten this down. Now you wanna make sure that's good and tight. So once that's bottomed out, go ahead and give it a few more turns Lock that down nice and tight. Once you have your bolt in for the spring, we're actually gonna go ahead and do the other side, replace or install the, the leveling unit here. And then once that is in and that spring is reattached on the other side, then we'll come back and we'll install our shock and our sway bar end link. We're gonna use a jack underneath our knuckle here and we're gonna raise up the axle. I'm gonna raise this up so that we can get the link to match up with the bracket here.
put your large washer on the back side, and we'll go ahead and install the nut. Now let's go ahead and tighten this down and torque it to 70 foot-pounds. Go ahead and position the shock and then we'll install our hardware. Let's go ahead and snug down our bolts here. torque down these bolts to 21 foot-pounds. Go ahead and remove our jack from underneath here. Go ahead and repeat the process for the passenger side. Install your ABS wire. You're going to press these into the little metal retainers here. And you have the last spot up here by the ball joint on the knuckle. Once you have your ABS wire in place here, go ahead and repeat the process for the passenger side. Go ahead and install your wheel. Get our lug nuts threaded on here. Once we have all these started a few threads, we'll go ahead and snug them down. Go ahead and torque down your lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds. We're picking up on the leveling kit for the Jeep installing the rear components. Using a 19 millimeter socket, loosen and remove the lug nuts. Now that we have all the lug nuts removed, go ahead, loosen, remove the wheel, and set it aside. Both rear shocks, we want to go ahead and loosen and remove the bolts on the bottom using a 19 millimeter box wrench on the bolt side and a 19 millimeter socket with the impact on the nut side. We're going to use our swivel head 19 to go ahead and loosen this bolt. And do the same for the passenger side. Remove the lower soy bar end link bolt, 18 millimeter wrench on the outside, 14 millimeter nut on the inside.
Now we have our jack under the passenger side of the axle. It doesn't matter which side you're doing first. We're going to be working on the driver's side spring. So we put the jack under the passenger side of the axle. We're going to go ahead and lower the vehicle down. If you're using a jack, you're going to lift the passenger side axle. You know, the passenger side axle up, it causes the driver side to droop down. And we're gonna use a pry bar. We're gonna get underneath our coil spring. And we're gonna work that out. Now that we have the spring on the driver's side here, I'm gonna go ahead and swap the jack, put it under the driver's side, push this side of the axle up, and then we'll pull out that passenger side spring. I'm gonna go ahead and go up inside the cup here. I'm gonna remove the bolt securing the cup to the spring there, and we're using a 15 millimeter. Now that we have our cup and our bolt off, we can go ahead and get our spacer. Take our spacer, and we're gonna take our cup, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of grease on this here. Just a little bit to help it slide into the spacer. I'm gonna line that up. Using a block of wood, super simple. Line that up so that the cup fits in there like so. Now we install this here, we're gonna take our bolt, line this up, put our bolt up through, and that'll anchor this unit in place. Go ahead and get our spacer up into place and get our bolt started in here. Let's go ahead and tighten this bolt down. Now we have our spring in place and we have a, you can use a pry bar or something like this here to get this in. You can also use a spring compressor to work this up and into the spring perch. Now right here, what we're doing is we're using a small scissor jack. We're gonna use a block of wood and go between the top of the scissor jack and here on the top. And then we're going to expand this here. And that'll allow us to go ahead and push down this axle to fit that spring in. Now that we have the spring in place, it's on our leveler and is down on the spring perch. We can now go ahead and press in your bump stop. go. Now that we have our spring in, go ahead and remove the jack. Remove that block of wood. The reason why we're using the block of wood is it distributes the pressure evenly. You don't want to damage the floor pan inside the Jeep. Close it on down. Go ahead and remove that. Now that we have our spring installed with our leveler, we're gonna go ahead and repeat this process for the passenger side. Once these are installed over there, we're gonna go ahead and install our shock and our sway bar end link. Now we're gonna put our jack underneath the axle 
and what we're gonna do with this here is raise up the axle so that the shock lines up. Now let's go ahead and put our bolt on the back side here. Tap our bolt through, let's put our nut on. Now that we have the bolt and the nut on here, let's go ahead and repeat this process for the passenger side. Install your sway bar end link. Go ahead and snug those down. Once you have this snug, go ahead and repeat for the passenger side. Let's tighten down our shock bolts. Now that you have that tight, you wanna go ahead and torque these down to 74 foot-pounds. Repeat for the passenger side. Torque the sway bar end link down to 40 foot pounds. Repeat for the passenger side. Install your wheel. I want to go ahead and get the lug nuts all started by hand first, and then we'll come on back and snug them down. Go ahead and torque down the lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds. After you've torqued all your lug nuts down, you want to go ahead and bring the vehicle down to a local alignment shop. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.